Not long ago, somebody had likened playing jazz to playing Magic the Gathering. You're using a strict, constructed set of rules with a specific manner of playing to create something unique and different for each one who actually plays the piece. In my opinion, we could liken this same comparison to Path of Exile. Path of Exile's rule set is very strict and unbreakable. However, within those rule sets, there are certain variations and permutations that allow you to create something unique to your own design. In my case, my Path of Exile Jazz is Viper Strike, and the instrument I've used to play it is a two-handed sword. Now, I do realize that poison builds are nothing new in this league, in this game in general. However, very few people have actually used Viper Strike, this being due to the fact that it's a single target skill. There's several other options that are just as strong, if not more, powerful, and the percentage increase on the poison is not actually that useful. With a base 60% you could easily get to 130% poison chance, which doesn't increase the damage at all. You could easily reach 100% chance to poison on any other skill. So what is the actual advantage? Viper Strike has been buffed to allow uh, base damage to each attack. The damage is chaos, so it doesn't get scaled with your actual weapon percentile damage. The base damage added is so high that you don't need to have added chaos damage anymore. So even though they reduce the base percentile damage of the skill itself, adding this flat chaos damage to the skill has allowed you to gain about 40 to 30 percent more damage overall. This brings the weapon damage to 1 million DPS on a normal weapon, or 2 to 3 million DPS on a weapon that has the Del Fossil crafted onto it, which gives 60% more damage. Mathil did a great video on how to craft these weapons. I definitely recommend to go look into that, as I have not actually had the time to be able to do this. That being said, I believe that this build, if given the proper time, can easily carry you into late game, in game scenarios. The reason I believe this to be the case is due to what my current DPS is. With a good weapon, although not perfectly crafted weapon. Most of my items also include mainly defensive purposes, so swapping out gloves or a proper DPS ring could easily bring my damage up another 20-30%. So putting all this together, you can reach 2-3 to three million DPS without too much trouble. Using a two-handed weapon from the very beginning, you have no issues with range and reaching pretty much the entire screen. This makes the itemization for clear speed actually very easy and allows you to focus only on defense at first and then once you have enough currency built up to cover your defenses you can add in some damage. Attack speed gloves with some flat damage or even embalmers. Uh, embalmers give about 10% more damage on its own so it's a very good option as well but not absolutely necessary. A good rare glove would probably outshine the embalmers fairly easily but cost effectiveness goes to the embalmers. Things I've used for Care Speed are pretty simple for single target DPS. You've got Ancestral Call, Mid Splash, um, to be able to clear pretty much the entire screen. And then it's mostly just damage. Deadly ailments, vile toxins. I'd like to get a more melee damage as an additional link, however, I cannot get the right socket colors yet. Um, so I just slapped in a, nat a lesser poison just for the added damage. It's it's the highest DPS skill I can use in this gym socket that's green colored. Um, red would be the most effective, blue would be very good as well, but unfortunately I haven't gotten lucky enough to roll the right colors on there. Is it satisfying? I'd say it definitely is. I feel like it could use a bit more crit chance, but going two-handers, I don't get that much crit off of it. Um, so a assassin variant with daggers or continuing with Pathfinder and going daggers instead of anything else would also be perfectly viable. 
for sustaining life, I've invested pretty heavily into the life leech nodes. You could get around this with getting more life gain on hit. I currently have one Elder Ring with 15 life gain on hit, and that's helped quite a bit. Um, having two would be even better, but those are pretty rare rolls, and getting that plus other good stats gets to be pretty expensive for the rings. So that's where the claws come in as a very good option for sustain, but again, it's a preference. Would you rather go for building around plus weapon range, or would you rather go for building around additional sustain on your items. Another choice that's purely optional is to go with acrobatics. The additional dodge gives you better survivability and doesn't require you to have an amazing evasion chest or evasion items and still be able to dodge hits on a fairly good basis and also provides the additional spell dodge which is the only source of spell mitigation that I currently have. So I highly recommend getting phase acrobatics course absolutely not completely necessary but it is nice i haven't been able to find the last trial yet so i'm still stuck at only six so i hope this one was interesting and useful for you in your planning and consideration of what build to play i highly recommend that once you get a feel for the game and once you have an idea of what makes each different build work to play around with it yourself and find your own variations on the builds or make something up yourself. It is extremely satisfying to find something unique that you've done yourself and that can carry you into the Gaiden game. Of course the meta builds are meta for a reason, but that doesn't mean that other skills are not at all as good. I hope you've enjoyed the overview. I'm going to go on to my next build, which is going to involve reflect damage and playing around with a new molten shell. I feel like there's a large amount of potential in that one, especially with the Vol molten shell. So I'll be seeing you with that later.